Welcome to the BFTV tutorial movie number one, Getting Started. In this movie, we'll cover launching the game, navigating the battle map, determining your objectives, and accessing information on friendly and enemy forces. You'll need to have BFTB installed before proceeding. OK, let's get started. Launch BFTB by double-clicking its icon on the desktop. This will open the Startup Options screen where you can set the screen resolution to run the game in. The default is to match the current screen resolution, which is just fine. So let's hit OK. The startup screen now appears with six menu options at the bottom right. Select New Game. This opens the Scenario Selection window. Click on Tutorial Return to St. Vith. <coughs> its details appear in the left pane. Hit OK. The Scenario Options window is now open. Click on Play As to toggle it to Allies 3rd Corps Headquarters. Note that the br Scenario Briefing recommends we use Realistic Orders Delay. If this is not already set, click on the fourth notch on the slider. Leave all the other options as is and select Begin Scenario. After a short wait, the game will open. Note the screen is divided into three parts. We have a sidebar on the left, a display toolbar down the bottom, and the main area is occupied by the battle map. Note the menu button on the display toolbar. Selecting this opens the end game menu. From here, you can return, leave, or save the current game. You can load a previous save game, or you can quit Command Ops. For now, we'll just return back to the game. The battle map is a 2D vector map. Lines represent roads, rail, and minor rivers. Areas represent urban, vegetation, major rivers, and contour or altitude layers. Right click on the battle map to show a pop-up panel with various characteristics about the terrain at the selected location. Left click to hide the pop-up. Scroll the mouse wheel forward to zoom in one level. Scroll it back to zoom out one level. There are six levels of zoom. Right click on the map and drag to move the map in the chosen direction. You can do the same thing using the viewable area box on the strat map. Alternatively, move the cursor to the top edge and the map will scroll up, to the bottom edge and it will scroll down, and to the left edge and it scrolls left, and to the right edge and it scrolls right. Note, if you're running this on a multiple monitor system, then the auto-scrolling won't work on an edge that abuts your other monitors. OK, so now you know how to move around the battle map. What you need to do now is review your commander's briefing and determine your objectives. Then you can examine your forces and those of the enemy. Select the Briefings tab from the sidebar and read the text. This will set the scene and give you a broad overview of what you need to achieve. In short, as the commander of the 4th Armoured Division, you must drive north to and secure the town of St. Vith. You must do this as soon as possible. You start with a brigade size force, Combat Command A. The rest of the division will arrive as reinforcements over the next two days. You're opposed by the enemy's 12th Volksgrenadier Division, and this can be reinforced by an enemy armoured column seen approaching from the west. Click on the Objectives tab. This will list five objectives, only two of which are active. The three that are greyed out will become active later. Click on the Steinbook Bridge objective. Its details appear below, and its location is highlighted on the map, with a perimeter range ring around it. Achievement points are awarded for both occupation and completion. The aim is to achieve 100 points, 
There are actually 116 on offer, including for destroying the enemy. So you have a little leeway, but basically you need to drive hard and fast, seizing each of the four terrain objectives and hold them till the end of the scenario. You control an objective when you have a superiority of 10 to 1 inside its perimeter. When this happens, there'll be a green border appeared around the objective icon. Winning is determined by the difference between how many achievement points you have and those that the enemy has. If you have 50 more than the enemy, you get a decisive victory. 20 or more, and you get a marginal. If the difference is between plus or minus 20, then it's a draw. Less than that, and you've lost. So you need to not only achieve your objectives, but you need to deny the enemy his. However, just as in real life, you don't know exactly what they are. You do know from the briefing that St. Vith is vital to the German supply network. So you can bet that they'll defend this and the approaches leading to it. Let's take a quick look at your forces. Click on the 35th Tank Battalion Headquarters. This highlights the unit. Note the green command lines leading to each of its subordinates and the blue command line leading to its superior. The white open-ended rectangle represents the area it occupies on the map. Note that when you select the unit on the map, its details are displayed in the sidebar. There's a wealth of information here, and you can explore this at your leisure. For now, we'll just take a quick look at the General tab, the Equipment and Supply tab. The rest you can explore in your own time. At the top of the general tab you'll see a series of indicator bars that tell you how strong and effective your unit is. Roll the cursor over the personnel bar and you'll see that it has 70% of its established strength. Below these are a column of stats of AFEs, guns, etc. that you have in your unit. The column on the left is for the selected unit and the column on the right is for the force as a whole, i.e. the unit itself plus all its subordinates. Click on the Equipment and Supply tab. This has a list of all the equipment and supplies that the unit has. Double click the M3A1 half track and this will open its establishment data. This is the data generic to all items of this type of equipment. Click on the Performance tab to see how fast it can move, how much armour it has, etc. Go back to the general tab and double click on the armament at the bottom. This will open its establishment data, click on its performance and you can see here what firepower it has at what range and how effective it is. Hit the close button to go back to the half tracks data and again to go back to the equipment supply list. The other tabs in the unit data view show details of the command, the supply depot if there is one, its unit history and the log of unit events. You can view these later at your leisure. Click on A Company 51st Mechanised Infantry Battalion. You can gain a lot of information from its icon. It has a type symbol in the top left. In this case it's a mechanised infantry symbol. At the top right is the unit information box. This can be used to display a wide range of data. Click on the unit info button on the display toolbar at the bottom of the screen to change the type of information or you can use the function keys as a keyboard shortcut. In the middle of the icon is the unit's designation. In this case it's A51 standing for A Company 51st Armoured Infantry Battalion. Below this at the bottom of the icon is the command bar which displays the unit size symbol and other symbols as appropriate. In this case the unit size symbol is a vertical bar which stands for a company. 
three dots stands for a platoon. Two bars is a battalion. In this case here you can see it has a headquarters symbol off to the left. Let's have a look at our enemy forces. Click on an enemy unit. It displays similar data on the sidebar except that it has two extra fields, one for the sighting age and one for its reliability, indicating just how old the information is and how good it is. In this case, while the report is current, meaning within the last five minutes, its reliability is vague. This is in part due to the poor visibility we have as it's still night. If you roll your cursor over the weather display at the top, you can see this quite clearly. Now that you've had a look at your forces, Take some time to review the terrain over which you will operate. Currently, your forces occupy this ridge south of Steinbrecht, your initial objective. With the snow terrain pattern, lighter contours are higher than darker ones. So down here is low terrain where the river is, and up here is a hill. Right click on the river and you'll see that the move rate for motorised is zero, meaning our motorised units can't cross there. The only non-motorised units you have is the battalion from the 318th Infantry. The rest are all motorised. So how are we going to cross this river? Click on the Tools tab from the sidebar and select the Quickest Pathing Tool button for motorised. Click once on the south bank and a second time on the north bank. This will calc a route between the two locations and display this on the screen. Note that it uses the Steinbrick crossing. This is the only way across, hence why you must secure this objective. Double click to cancel the pathing tool. You also want to determine what can be seen from specific locations like this hill here. Select the line of sight tool, click on the hill and drag towards the town Lomas Vila. Where there is a blue line you have some visibility. The brighter the colour the better the visibility. At this time you can't see much because it's night. Drag again to Mars Belt. Note the black lines. Each one of these represents 100 metres. And the taller the vertical line, the higher the altitude. This can give you a cross-sectional view of the steepness of the terrain, which is quite marked in this case. Feel free at this stage to explore the situation, select units, view their data, move around the map, and use the terrain pop-up, pathing and line of sight tools to get a feel for the lay of the land. When you're ready to proceed, fire up Tutorial Movie 2 to learn how to assess, plan and issue orders. See you then.